it was just a happenstance, a, a synchronistic meeting that I am forever delighted that I had. I was just about to eat lunch one day at this conference, and there was a kiosk in the middle of the hallway where I was putting mayonnaise on a sandwich, and somebody happened to reach over me, putting mayonnaise on her sandwich, and of course I looked around to see who was there, and she looked at me, and I did a double take, and she said, what? Like, why are you looking at me that way? And I said, because, I hope you don't mind my saying this, but you remind me of a hybrid. And she smiled and she said, I am a hybrid. My name is Barbara Lamb, and I am a long-term psychotherapist. I've been a licensed psychotherapist since 1976, and then by 1991, people started coming to me wanting to know about some of the very unusual experiences they had been having, experiences with unusual beings appearing in their bedrooms at night or appearing somewhere else during the daytime or unusual crafts, usually circular or disc-shaped crafts, following them in a car and then the car motor stopping. And then little beings would come to the car and open the doors, even if they're locked in the car, and then take the person away for a while. We call that an abduction. So over the years, I have had the great privilege of regressing almost 2,000 individuals separately to their encounters with extraterrestrial beings. It may have been happening for millennia for all we know, but it certainly has been happening in the 20th century and now in the 21st century. The people all over the world are being encountered with by these extraterrestrial beings. So the typical thing is that when a person has a visit from an extraterrestrial being, or maybe two or three beings, they are put into a state of non-awareness and the inability to move. People do not like that. That usually is quite frightening for them. Or sometimes the person will simply be aware, first of all, of waking up, and there's one of those unusual beings standing there in the room with them right near the bed. Now, when this is happening, the person very often feels that they cannot move, almost as if they've been paralyzed. They might be able to move their eyes or maybe their heads, but that seems to be about all. They also find that they cannot call out for anybody else who might be nearby. And even if there's a sleeping partner in the same bed, that partner always seems to be what we call switched off. And that means the partner seems to be so deeply asleep that they can't be awakened by the person who's about to have the encounter. And very quickly, it seems like they are often levitated, lifted up right from the bed, sometimes right through the wall, 
with the other being or being and into a craft. And then it seems like the craft moves much further away so as not to be seen by other people in the area. So that is the typical beginning of an encounter or what many people call abduction. Now in these experiences on board the craft, so many different kinds of things happen to various people. As I said, these beings of different types all seem to have their own agenda for coming and taking this particular person. These encounters usually last, could be a half an hour, could be an hour, could be two hours, once in a while even longer than that, and then the person is floated back down to earth and returned, usually to the place that they were removed from. So it's a very mysterious process that happens, and we are hearing more and more about it as more and more experiencers of this phenomenon are coming forward and feeling a little bit more free, a little bit more comfortable in telling other people about these encounters that they have had. It has been a fascinating journey. I have learned so much and I have grown hugely in my awareness of the cosmos not only the planets and the stars and the galaxies, but the beings living on some of those stars and planets in some of those galaxies. Because many different types of extraterrestrials seem to be involved in the program of coming here to planet Earth. They may very well go to other planets for all I know. But we do know that they do come frequently to planet Earth and to visit certain people. Not all people get visited by extraterrestrials, but many people do. It's been estimated by polls that 8 million Americans are affected by these extraterrestrial encounters. And then, as I said, the phenomenon is going on all over the world. So there are many more millions of people who are having extraterrestrial contact. There are many, many different species of what we refer to as extraterrestrial beings. They come from many different planets, as far as we can tell. And there are quite a few species who have uh, participated in this hybridization project with the hybrids whom I know in Meet the Hybrids. For instance, we have human-like races, like some of the Nordic-looking races and the Pleiadian races. And they're very high in intelligence and morality and even in spirituality. And so those hybrids right from the beginning could pass much more easily as humans here on Earth. In great contrast to that, we have little gray aliens and they are more known for doing examinations of people and even dissecting tissue samples of people and creating hybrids. And sometimes those beings are said to come from Zeta Reticuli. The Pillian beings were sort of surprised that they can combine reproductively because they're reptile types, uh, but they do combine uh, genetically with human beings. And those hybrids are sort of unusual looking. They may look quite human in a way, and yet they have the unusual skin and unusual eyes that the reptilians have. And some of the reptilian beings are very benevolent, very kind-hearted, uh, actually wonderful beings that 
we would be pleased to know. And there's a species called blue Arcturian, who are beautiful, tall, slender, blue beings. And they have no hair. They have beautiful faces that in some ways we could say are very similar to human faces, but obviously they're not human. And they are very spiritually advanced, benevolent, kindly beings. And then there are the mantis beings, very, very tall beings. They're often seen to be eight feet tall, sometimes nine feet or ten feet tall, like huge, tall insects with great big wraparound eyes and very narrow chins and sometimes are referred to as insectoids and etheric beings who are not even densely physical as we are, but are definitely really intelligent, high spiritual beings. So these beings have contributed genetics to these hybrids and have frequent visits with them. With all the different kinds of procedures that the extraterrestrials do, including some very positive things that they do with people in many cases, such as healing the person and teaching the person healing skills so they can heal others back here on Earth, and they teach them telepathic skills and teleportation skills. So many children are put into what seems like a classroom type of setting on board the craft, and they have extraterrestrial adults there, and sometimes extraterrestrial children with them and other human abducted children. And all of those human children are taught how to move things with their minds. So they start with something very simple, like moving a very small feather put on the floor. And one child after the other will take a turn of focusing their eyes on that feather and seeing if they can move the feather just by thinking of it moving. When they are all able to move the feather with their minds, then they're given the task of moving a piece of paper with their minds. And when they've accomplished that, they may be given the task of moving a paper clip. And gradually, you know, a pencil and objects gradually that are a bit heavier and more difficult to move simply by looking at it and focusing their mind on it. And then as these children get older and have more extraterrestrial experiences, then they are often downloaded with very interesting information, sometimes when they're on the ship, and sometimes when they're asleep or even driving in a car. Anyway, being rather quiet and not talking to somebody. So that downloading seems to be happening a lot. I know of some adults who are engineers, and when they are busy working on a highly technical engineering project, they are receiving downloads of information into their brains. And we also know of the rare person who works in very complicated engineering projects involving space travel and all kinds of difficult challenges like that. And they are downloaded by another person in the room who may be actually an extraterrestrial. And those human-looking extraterrestrials give the engineer just the missing piece that they're needed for that invention that they're busy trying so hard to figure out. So that brings up another aspect that we believe that there are some 
beings from other planets who look very human and doing some very intelligent jobs amongst us. In addition to knowing about many, many different procedures that these beings do with the people they have taken, they also have a reproduction program going on. That is, a program of creating hybrid babies who grow up to be hybrid children and then eventually hybrid adults. So we're talking about extraterrestrial hyphen human hybrid beings. The beings start out by creating hybrids who are one half extraterrestrial and one half human. And then they want to create further generations of those hybrids. So there are these different stages of hybrids. We have the very early stages, half ET, half human, and then a middle stage where there's more human component involved. And then we have late stage hybrids who seem to be mostly human, but they still do have a, a good portion of extraterrestrial in them. And some of those hybrids, as far as we can tell, do live on Earth. Cynthia, one of our hybrids, I never saw her change into her full reptilian form, but we were having a conversation with a few other people. And I said, Cynthia, do you feel anything different about your eyes? And she said, oh, yeah, well, I feel a little pressure in my eyes. Why do you ask? And I said, because I'm seeing them change into the vertical slits, because she had reptilian genetics in her. And she said, oh, good. And she rushed into the ladies' room so she could look in the mirror and see that happening for herself. The earlier stage hybrids cannot live on Earth because they're not human enough, and they would not be able to withstand our bacteria and our viruses, nor would they be accepted very well by human beings because they really look substantially different. They would probably be considered rather freakish. So they do not come here. They remain on the ship. Sometimes they're actually helping with procedures that the other beings are doing. Sometimes my clients in regression work have said that they're in a spacecraft with the extraterrestrials, and they will see in the background, maybe across the room, they will see people that look human at first glance, and they'll think, oh, good, there's some other people here. I'm, I'm not the only one amongst these unusual-looking beings. And then when they look more closely at what they thought were human beings, they realize, hmm, they're a little different. They're not maybe quite human, and those are actually the hybrids, it turns out. So there is a very vast hybrid program going on between extraterrestrial beings and human beings. We might wonder, well, who are the humans involved in this? In other words, a way to think of it is, who are the parents of these hybrid beings? It's not just anybody that this seems to happen to. The beings seem to be very interested in certain families. They like to follow a genetic line from generation to generation. So an individual in life who comes to the realization at some point or other 
that they are having these experiences, they may not have really been aware that anyone else in their family, any of those generations, have been having experiences too. But when they start really thinking about it, hmm, they think, well, my mother used to talk about having nightmares of unusual beings in the room. And if that mother is still living and the person starts asking questions, they might conclude after a while that, oh, I see, I never knew it before, but my mother has been having these encounter experiences also. The same with grandparents or aunts or uncles of the experiences. Or the children sometimes report being very frightened during the night or having somebody come out of the closet. They describe it as a little man or a friend. Sometimes children like those visits from the small extraterrestrial beings. Or sometimes a child would say, oh, there's a monster in the room. And they may call out, but the parents may be switched off out of awareness and not even hear the child calling out. Or the parent might go into the bedroom of the child and suddenly that being has disappeared. It is thought sometimes that maybe some of these beings are interdimensional and they can pop in quickly from another dimension and then they can equally quickly pop out of our physical dimension and into their dimension where we don't see them anymore. And many children remember being taken aboard a craft and being shown around this miraculous place with curved walls and round rooms and unusual lighting. One woman whom I regress to when she was a child, uh, she was told that she was free to walk along the hallways which were very large and curved, but she was always told, don't ever touch the walls because they would harm you. They're full of so much energy. And indeed, to the child, it seemed like those walls of the hallway were alive in some way. In fact, the whole craft was alive. The walls seemed to have life in them. And that's reported by a number of adults as well. So it can be a very exciting experience to some children. And some children experience it all in a very much more frightening manner. It seems quite a complex process, and yet it works amazingly well. So, as I mentioned with the little gray beings, a number of the species will take eggs from the human woman, and they will do that through the navel, or they just puncture through the wall of the abdomen close to the ovary and remove the eggs. Or sometimes they remove the eggs by going up through the vagina and into the ovary. And then males also have these experiences where sperm is removed from them by the extraterrestrial and used in creating a hybrid mixed with their genetic material. And that again gets implanted on another occasion into a human woman who will gestate that embryo for up to three months. Sometimes a human male is taken on board the craft and ushered into a room with an extraterrestrial female and they will mate together and that female again would have to have a womb and the right apparatus internally, uh, she will carry the baby full term and give birth to that baby who will remain on the craft. Sometimes a hybrid male will mate with a hybrid female 
So that offspring will have a lot of hybrid in it and even a little bit more human component. Another method is that a human female will be taken onto the ship and she will be artificially impregnated with material from an extraterrestrial, or in some cases, she'll be impregnated with material from a few extraterrestrials. So that hybrid will not only be part ET, but part a variety of extraterrestrials and humans. One of our hybrids has said that the ETs have contributed genetics from 89 different extraterrestrial species. Each of these hybrids became a hybrid in a different way. For instance, Cynthia was created because her father was participating in a special government project where they were experimenting to see if they could create ET human hybrids. So this is definitely a scientific experimentation. So what his father did was to drug the mother on one celebratory occasion, and she became unconscious, and he had arranged for her to be taken, abducted by humans who put a little embryo into her body that they had already made up from eggs previously taken from her ovaries and sperm taken from him, the father, and then a mixture of about six different types of extraterrestrial genetics. I've known of cases too with some of my clients that a human woman will be sleeping in her bed at night and an extraterrestrial male will come here for a brief time, visit her in the room, coming right through the walls or through the closed window, and combine sexually with her, and then she becomes pregnant with that hybrid embryo, which is later taken by those same beings to be in the gestation tank on the ship and raised on the ship. There have been quite a number of reasons given by the extraterrestrials for why they create hybrids. This material has all come from the regressions I've done with the experiencers who've been involved in the reproductive program. So the first reason given by a number of these species is that they create the hybrids in order to save their dying race. And they give reasons for why they are dying. One group says that they have become too inbred with their own kind, and therefore they've been weakened by all that inbreeding. So that's gone on for thousands of years, maybe even millennia, for all we know. And some of these beings say that they can no longer reproduce. Their females have become infertile over very long periods of time. So obviously their race is going to be dying out. Some say that they have lost their ability to reproduce because they have been harmed by radiation. I don't mean from nuclear bombs, but simply from the radiation of traveling through space and bit by bit, they get too irradiated to be able to reproduce offspring. One of the mistakes that they made was in doing a good deal of genetic engineering to tweak certain aspects of their genetics. They have done so much cloning so frequently over such a long period of time that they have actually lost the ability to reproduce naturally. And they know that we humans do reproduce naturally, 
they would like to regain that ability in their hybrids. Some of the ETs have said that they create hybrid because they want their beings to be more substantial physically. Some of them have become uh, very small, very thin, and very weakened. And they see us human beings as being much more hearty, much more substantial, much more muscly, and able to do so much more physically. Some of the beings have said that they would like their hybrids to have the component of emotion that humans have and to be able to have compassion. So many of those species have nothing even vaguely resembling what we experience as love. So they may have concern for each other, especially for their offspring, but they don't experience what they see that we have, which we call love. So another group has said that they would like to genetically re-encode humans to live in more balanced ways. And by balanced ways, they mean less hostile, less greedy, less warlike, and more balanced, more kindly. Another group of beings said that they are hoping to perpetuate the human race in case our planet becomes unlivable. An electromagnetic catastrophe will happen on Earth, resulting from your negative technology that you have already developed, and it will be misused and it will cause widespread disasters. So you need hybrid beings amongst you who could carry on living elsewhere. Another group wanted to create beings who would be part human and part extraterrestrial so that these beings could sometimes live on our planet like ambassadors, understanding the extraterrestrials in a way that we can't really understand them, and also understanding humans. The ETs could not do that, but hybrids, being partly human, would be more likely to be able to be here long enough for periods of time to, to sort of ease into human society. Not to take over human society, but to live amongst us and really experience what that's like by staying here for long periods of time. So there's no doubt about the fact that these hybrids are here for benevolent service. Yes, there are very wonderful benevolent species out there, as well as some of the species that come here and that are more self-serving. But these hybrids come from a really benevolent, highly evolved, spiritually oriented being. And they would like to see us evolve enough to justify being members of the great galactic community. So how do humans react to having hybrid babies and hybrid children? That varies a lot. Some women, when they are presented with a hybrid baby on board the craft and told that it's their baby, they're horrified because it looks very strange. It doesn't look like a normal human baby. And they, they just don't want anything to do with it. And yet, always, the extraterrestrials insist that the woman would hold that baby and nurture the baby, and hopefully even love the baby. Some women are horrified, but some women actually take to that quite naturally. They have a lot of maternal instinct, 
and even though the baby looks maybe sickly or not quite right or not attractive enough, not cute like our babies do, um, that she'll be able to really feel a loving feeling, a nurturing feeling, and hold and rock the baby and, you know, really give it some love. And it's explained to these women that these hybrid infants have to have some love and nurturing from a human mother, because without that, they just would not survive. Apparently, there were a number of experimentations with having hybrid babies, and they, they did not make any effort to have a human mother come on board and nurture the baby. And those hybrid babies all died. And it's the same with men, too, that they want the little hybrid child to at least have a sense of a human father, somebody else really related to them from the human population. Because after all, these hybrids are going to grow up on the ship and know only the extraterrestrials who are on that ship. And some mothers are shown their hybrid baby and they love the hybrid baby, even though the baby looks quite unusual from our point of view. And they continue to have visits with the hybrid baby. Some women I know uh, have hybrid children who are as old now as in their 20s. And on occasion, the woman is taken and still has a chance to know that hybrid child. Now, some of those mothers really want to have these further abductions so that they can see the hybrid child again. And some of these mothers have many hybrid children. I know a woman who has 34 hybrid children. She did not even know until she was told that in one of these encounter experiences. Another woman I know has been told that she has 22 hybrid children. And these two women really wish that they could have their children on Earth, or at least see them frequently and sort of follow them through their growing up experiences. We interviewed nine people who we understood were hybrids. Some of them actually have some physical differences from the rest of us humans. For instance, one of the hybrids has a different bone consistency. It's much harder and firmer, tougher, stronger than our bones. Another one has a different blood type that the rest of us humans don't have. Two of them have different internal organs that are misplaced in their bodies. In other words, organs that would usually be in the lower abdomen are now up here in the chest somewhere. In one case, uh, the hybrid woman has thumbs that really spread out at the end. So the points of the thumbs were much wider than any of the thumbs of the, the rest of us. People who hear about these hybrids immediately want to know, oh, have they been genetically tested? These particular hybrids have so far declined to be genetically tested, primarily because all of the genetic testing labs are mandated to send the results of each genetic test to a particular department of our government. So all of our hybrids, whom we know, always felt very, very different from everybody around them, even different from everybody in their own family. They always felt like they were from somewhere else. They were from out there somewhere, that their real family was out there rather than their earth mother and father. And these people were frequently having contacts 
with their extraterrestrial beings whom they have the genetics of. So in other words, a way we could think of it was that they had many, many ET visits here and many abductions to the spaceships. But they didn't think of them as abductions because they felt like the beings who came for them and the beings on the ships they were taken to were their true family. So they became aware of their ET lineage. That is, they were told by their extraterrestrial beings that in many, many, many lifetimes, they had already been those species of beings. They had been extraterrestrials. Most of these hybrids are a mixture of more than one extraterrestrial species. So a hybrid isn't just like part hybrid and part gray alien or part human and part Andromedan, but they might be quite a different grouping of beings all in one, with the predominant one being human. So in some ways, there are some real disadvantages of being a hybrid on Earth. Often these hybrids have allergies to different foods and, and different substances that we have here, and that's from the extraterrestrial component. Uh, some of them have immune system problems, uh, respiratory problems. Uh, they often have boundary issues. In other words, it's difficult for them to let other humans get really, really close to them. Some of them have needed repeated encouragement to go ahead and use their psychic skills and their telepathic skills and their healing skills uh, because they know that certain people around them just think they're weird or that you know they're uncomfortable. Sometimes they have the difficulty of being harassed by unmarked helicopters. Uh, some of them have visits from men in black, which they do not welcome. Some of them are taken to underground bases, and they have testing done of them in a variety of different ways. And they're very, very sensitive to what goes on in the world, especially all the negative things. They, they just don't understand why people lie to each other or why they hurt each other or why there are wars between one country and another, why everything is so divided, why we have polarities, different political parties, one country lording it over another country. Even at school, we have the good students and the slower students, and they have the popular kids and the left out kids. I mean, it just goes on and on when you think of almost every aspect of our human life. And these hybrids always thought that's so wrong because they have learned from their extraterrestrial beings that all of us are one. But there are also many blessings that they consider about being a hybrid on Earth. These hybrids are very intelligent, intuitive, very psychic, and they all have a much broader appreciation and understanding of the whole cosmos. Their scope is so much more enormous than most of ours is. And they like having the special abilities to help other people. Some of them are very good at medical intuition and knowing totally accurately what's going on inside somebody's body and what a certain problem 
is all about. And then they can use their skills to heal that other person. They enjoy their telepathic skills sometimes too, being able to do special things like move things with their mind and levitate things. And they don't do it in front of most people, but they're fortunate if they have a friend who they can freely use their skills with. Some of them had animal communication, telepathic communication, being able to communicate things to the animal and hear back accurately from the animal. A couple of them have the ability of bilocation, being in different places at the same time. Each of these hybrids has had experiences of astral traveling, which has been very natural, out of the body experiences. And they went far and wide, even to other dimensions and to other planets and other spaceships in some of their astral travels. And some of them shapeshift. They really completely throughout their whole bodies change form. Some of them do channeling. Some of them even channel from deceased persons, bringing useful messages through from the departed. The common mission that they all have uh, has a few components. One is to help humanity to be aware of the reality of extraterrestrial beings. Probably it's fair to say that most humans do not understand or believe or trust that there are extraterrestrial beings of different types in the universe. Part of their mission is to help people become acquainted with that part of reality, that the others do exist, and that the others come here for brief periods of time. And they are here to help understand that there's a multitude of extraterrestrial beings, not just the little green men that people talk about or the little gray aliens, but many, many different types. They like to have people begin to know about interdimensional beings. And many of what we consider extraterrestrials certainly seem to be interdimensional. In other words, they can appear to be solid and physical, and then sometimes they seem to just retreat into a different dimension, and we cannot see them at all. Some of them do very accurate channeling of extraterrestrial beings and giving us a lot of perspective from the extraterrestrial points of view, perspective on all of reality and also about what's happening on Earth. And they are here to help inspire humans to protect each other and to help to protect and preserve all life on Earth, as well as to preserve the Earth itself. So these hybrids are here to help to raise human consciousness. Even the late, wonderful Dr. John Mack, psychiatrist at Harvard University and teacher of psychiatrists, who did so much wonderful regression work with experiences of extraterrestrial contact and brought that into many more people knowing about it. He said something very important, I think. After destruction of the Earth and of humans, hybrids will be placed in groups in many parts of the Earth to live as a new civilization with a new system of knowledge and ways from another world.